There are a few reasons why a woman would want to set her husband on fire. The first is that she wants money and stands to get a lot of it if he winds up dead. If you're a man, you can easily avoid this scenario by remaining poor your whole life. That way, your wife will never be able to love you just for your money. You could also never get married, learn how to see into the future, or other options like that. The second reason a woman would set her husband on fire is that she's pissed at him for having another woman in his life without her knowledge. This seems pretty fair. And the third reason could be that she's just plain tired of being on the receiving end of his barbaric violence and or perversity and decides it's time to dish out some of her own. Given the amount of domestic abuse directed at women by men, it's kind of interesting and not a little satisfying to think about it going in the other way instead. With one insane exception, all of the entries in this video fall into the three categories that we mentioned. So let's get started. Number 10. Michelle Hooks and the Accidental Fire Michelle and Darren Hooks of Jacksonville County, Missouri, decided to separate in the summer of 1995. It was clearly a good idea, as they couldn't be in the same house very long without trying to kill each other. Mrs. Hooks ended up moving out. On the night of August the 28th, she came over to the house to get some of her belongings and discovered another woman present. This lit her up enough that Mr. Hooks had to wrestle a screwdriver out of one of her hands and a pair of scissors out of the other. Michelle returns the next evening on the warpath. She arrived before Mr. Hooks returned from work and was waiting for him in the kitchen. This, as you could probably guess, is the best place to set a husband on fire. She doused him with gasoline, and as he grabbed her arms and tried to defend himself, she flicked a lighter. She later claimed that this was accidental, but, you know, how do you do that accidentally? Anyway, Darren suffered severe burns on half of his body, and Michelle was convicted of first-degree assault. From case law, as Mrs. Hooks was burning, he asked her, Why are you doing this to me? Mrs. Hooks responded that if she couldn't have him, nobody could. Number 9. Marietta, Pastor's Wife In July of 2012, Mary Atta and her husband, Pastor Darlington Atta, were enjoying a nice evening at home in Efren, Nigeria. Then, ostensibly at a time she was having sexual pleasure with her hubby, as the Nigerian Tribune so rightly puts it, the phone rang and ruined everything. It was the pastor's mistress, so quite naturally Mrs. Atta was beset by holy rage and had no choice but to run to the kitchen for two ingredients, ground pepper and a knife. The former she flung into the minister's face to discombobulate him, the latter she introduced to the minister's neck. Then, just for good measure, she set him alight as he was bleeding out. The good pastor, he died soon after at Wari Central Hospital. For her crime of not murdering her cheating husband in a more subtle fashion, Marietta was sentenced to death by hanging by the Delta State Judiciary Efferon High Court in 2016. The justice of the court said, The sentence of this court upon you, Marietta, is death by hanging by the neck till you be dead. Number 8. Margaret Rudin, the Black Widow Killer Margaret Rudin, the Black Widow Killer, was convicted in 1997 of murdering her multi-millionaire husband Ron. He had gone missing in December of 1994, and his torched corpse was found just a month later, stuffed in a trunk. Well, most of it was stuffed in a trunk. His skull turned up in a ravine nearby. Margaret had been set to inherit 60% of Ron's estate, so of course people were suspicious. But there wasn't enough evidence for authorities to pin any charges on Margaret until 1996. That is, when a diver found Ron's long-missing 22 Ruger at the bottom of Lake Mead with a silencer attached. The district attorney was able to use this new piece of evidence to charge Margaret with murder the following year. But by then, she was long gone. It took two and a half years for them to track her down, and when they finally found her, she was holed up with a retired firefighter in Massachusetts. Margaret was convicted of murder in 2001 and is serving her sentence in North Las Vegas. She insisted on her innocence from the get-go, and to this day denies responsibility for the killing. Number 7. Tatanisha Hedman vs. Hubby from Hell The story of Tatanisha Hedman and her jerk of a husband reads like a textbook case of pervert getting exactly what he deserves. Here, the perversion is child molestation, and the sweet, sweet consequence is being set on bloody fire by your own wife. This is more or less what happens on July the 17th, 2014, to Vincent Phillips, a horrible person who molested his seven-year-old stepdaughter, Hedman's child. Predictably, though, Hedman proceeded to unleash the literal fire of God upon Phillips while he slept, pouring gasoline on his head and upper chest, and then lighting him on fire. Phillips awoke in hell, but somehow managed to stumble out of the apartment, his head aflame like Johnny Blaze, and he drove Hedman's satin to a nearby convenience store where he begged for help and then passed out in front of the cops. 
Hedman later said she burned Phillips because shooting him was too nice, and we'd almost have to agree with that. But there is one place you could shoot a child molester that would be a lot less nice than setting him on fire. Plus, you know, then you could set him on fire afterwards. Hedman faced assault and arson charges, and Phillips faced first-degree child molestation charges. It looks like, at the very least, he will be heading to prison. Number 6. Regini Narayan, dong burner from Down Under In December of 2008, a woman from Adelaide, Australia, got some international attention by setting her husband's penis on fire. You see, Satish Narayan, this story star Bernie, was having an affair which his wife, Regini, most certainly did not approve of. So Mrs. Narayan decided to show him that she meant business. Showing someone in Adelaide you mean business apparently involves methylated spirits and matches. And in this case, the penis of a Navy engineer you've been married to for 24 years. Satish, who was sleeping at the moment of ignition, quickly awoke and equally quickly knocked over the bottle of spirits. The blunder allowed the penis fire to grow into a full-fledged house fire and led to burns on three quarters of the unsuspecting cheat's body. Mrs. Narayan was reportedly remorseful for her action almost right away, and she tried to save Satish from the fire demon that she'd summoned. She stated, It's just his penis I wanted to burn. I didn't mean this to happen. Unfortunately, he died 20 days later. Number 5. Lydia Echeverria, the actress who played her homicidal self. Lydia Echeverria was a Puerto Rican actress of note who married producer of note Louis Vigoreau in 1960. The two made quite the celebrity couple back in the 60s and 70s, at least until January 1983 when Louis was found burnt to bacon in his car. The year before, it reportedly begun an affair with a model named Nydia Castillo. In 1984, Echeverria was charged with murder and in 1986 the verdict was handed down. Guilty and she would have to serve 208 years in prison. Echevarria's sentence was controversially commuted after just 13 years, and she was allowed to return home, where she lived under curfew. She went on to appear in several TV shows and plays, and get this, at one point she actually took on the role of a woman who gets convicted for murdering her husband. Echevarria masterminded the murder, but didn't do the murdery part herself. The actual killers were Francisco Papo Newman and David Lopez Watts, who kidnapped Figaro and drove him to a remote location outside of San Juan. There, they went to town with an ice pick and a tire iron, then locked Figaro, still alive, in the trunk. Newman set the car on fire, and all three men departed, one of them, into the afterlife. Number 4. Marilyn Plants, the Sunday School Teacher On August 26, 1988, after returning home from his night shift at the Oklahoman, Jim Plants got the crap kicked out of him by two 18-year-olds with baseball bats. One of the assailants was Clinton McKimble. The other was William Bryson, who was romantically involved with Jim's wife, Marilyn. Marilyn, who had hired the boys to do what they did, was in the other room with the kids at the time of the attack. So, why did they do this? Well, mainly for the $300,000 or so tied to Jim in the form of life insurance to which Marilyn was the beneficiary. But it was also because Jim was an abusive husband and Marilyn wanted him to, you know, accidentally disappear. Bryson later testified that Jim regularly beat his wife. I didn't have no specific reason why I killed him, he said. All I was thinking while I was beating him was all the times she came up to me with a black eye and crying. I didn't like that. Furthermore, Jim suspected she'd try to divorce him and had threatened to kill himself and her if she did. So let's get back to the attack and accidents in general. Seeing as how a body beat to a pulp in your own home doesn't look very accidental, Marilyn decided the boys should take Jim for a little drive. Some sources have reported that Jim was bludgeoned to death, but this isn't quite the truth, as Jim was definitely still alive when Bryson and McKimble loaded him up in his own pickup and headed to the sticks outside of Oklahoma City. There, on a lonely rural road, they set the truck ablaze while Jim was still inside. That situation looked a little more accidental, but it didn't exactly fool the investigators. All three conspirators were swiftly rounded up. McKimball ended up testifying against Bryson and Plants for a life sentence. Bryson was executed by lethal injection in June of 2000, and Plants followed in identical fashion the next May. For what it's worth, Marilyn was a Sunday school teacher. Number 3. Kiranjit Ahlualia's Homemade Napalm In 1989, Kiranjit Ahualia killed her cruel and abusive husband, Deepak, who frequently beat, tortured, and raped her. After 10 years of suffering his existence, she finally snapped and set him on fire with a mixture of caustic soda and petrol while he slept. He succumbed to his burn wounds a few days later. Caustic soda mixed with petrol, by the way, is basically napalm. Kiranjit essentially napalmed her husband to death. 
Kiran Jip was swiftly convicted of murder and sentenced to life in prison. However, in 1992, her sentence was quashed on appeal thanks to efforts by the Southall Black Sisters organization. A story later inspired a film. Her case helped transform the law regarding domestic abuse and battered women in the UK. She even won an award in 2001 and has written an autobiography. Number 2. Unidentified Chinese Woman we now move on to one of the most disturbing entries on this list, that of a Chinese woman who was forced to set her husband on fire. In April of 1942, American forces launched the Doolittle Raid on Japan in retaliation for Pearl Harbor. The flight from the USS Hornet was a one-way trip. Many of the pilots involved in the raid crash-landed in friendly Free China territory, where they were given aid by Chinese villagers and missionaries. The Imperial Army responded by mercilessly attacking the Chinese in one of the most savage military campaigns ever recorded. Bullet contests, bacteria warfare, pillaging, and mayhem of the highest order ensued. There's no need to go into all of the horrible details here, but let's just say there is a reason that history books have an entry called The Rape of Nanjing. The one detail we will mention pertains, of course, to the subject of this top 10 list. According to Smithsonian.com, in Huang, Mai Enling, who'd welcomed injured pilot Harold Watson into his home, was wrapped in a blanket, tied to a chair, and soaked in kerosene. Then soldiers forced his wife to torch him. War always seems to come with some atrocities, but this entry really does stand out. Number 1. Francine Hughes and the Burning Bed the story of Francine Hughes is a story of desperation. It also played an influential role in shaping the awareness and treatment of domestic abuse in the United States. In 1977, Francine endured one last beating from her husband, James Mickey Hughes, and went directly to the garage to fetch some gasoline. She returned to their bedroom and set the bed ablaze while he was in it, passed out drunk. Then, with her children in the car, she drove to the police station and confessed. It was a brazen, terrifying act, but it didn't just pop up out of nowhere. Like many tales of women directing violence at men, this one was prompted by years of domestic abuse that totally broke down a girl with nowhere to turn. People had known about the abuse for a long time. Her neighbors knew, friends knew, the cops too, but nobody helped her. People turned a blind eye and they just accepted abuse as a thing. So finally, Francine, she took matters into her own hands and... The rest is history. Mrs. Hughes was eventually acquitted, which at the time was unheard of in a situation involving premeditated murder. Her attorney had cleverly built her case on a temporary insanity plea, and it worked. It was one of the very first cases involving what's now commonly known as the battered woman's defense, or battered woman's syndrome. Francine's story led to a 1980 book by Faith McCulty, The Burning Bed, and a 1984 film by the same name, starring Farrah Fawcett. Unfortunately, there is an ironic and truly sick twist left to the story. The film left one man feeling a little bit freaked out, and after viewing it, he went off the deep end and set his estranged wife on fire. So I'm not going to ask whether you enjoyed that video, but I do hope you at least found it interesting. If you did, please do give us a like below, and don't forget to subscribe. And as always, thank you for watching.